What is going on, fellow fans of Clash of Clans? Hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you so much for stopping by. As you may know, the race for trophies this season between Galadon and Klaus continues, and I am going to drop out of the clouds to take a brief look at the status of things. I'm not even in the top 500 right now, 597th, with over 6,000 trophies, 6,062 to be precise. Now, in today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at five tips to trophy pushing, but what Klaus is in the middle of an attack right here. Ah, it's just a war. But why is he wasting his time with war? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I did my war attacks too. Klaus is attacking. Oh, look, he's dipping. He's attacking an 11. Okay, we know he's going to win that. That's not really a challenge. But okay, this is not my normal defending base either. This is my decoy base. We'll get to that in a little bit. But check it out. Here is the status. I am over... 200 trophies ahead of Klaus right now and uh, we're hoping to keep it that way through the rest of the season back into the clouds and now we will start by looking at some replays while we show the clouds in the top left so if I get a base during the recording of this episode I will certainly stop what I'm doing and will attack that base live but in the meantime what I wanted to do was maybe just pass on some of the tips and tricks that I use to try to maximize my trophies every season. We're going to go over five key trophy tips, and I'll start with the more obvious. The last tip I'm going to spend more time on because I think that it's a more difficult one to follow. A lot of players get things wrong when it comes to that. So we will start out with the easy ones, the most basic ones. And for number one, this is just about as basic as it gets. That is, your best offense is a good defense. That means you've got to have a good defensive base if you want to be pushing trophies. Now, of course, players have pushed trophies at lower base, lower town hall levels in the past. You don't have to have a maxed out base by any means, but you have to be realistic and understand that the less upgraded your base is, the more likely you are to be three-starred especially in this day and age, the day and age of really powerful offense. Also, for defense, clan castle troops are key. Switching out from your offensive troops to your defensive troops before you take a defense is important. And currently, my suggestion at Town Hall 12, best troops for clan castle, I would say probably two witches, a baby dragon, a wizard, and then a couple of whatevers, goblins, barbs, archers, eh, probably archers. But I think that that is your best bet for a defending clan castle right now. Second best, maybe two maxed out dragons. Either way, those are important. Getting those troops donated from your clan, absolutely key to preserving those trophies on defense. All right, let's move on to number two, another relatively obvious tip. Maximize your stars. That means you should be attacking with a three-star army every single time. Completely different, obviously, than a farming army. You want to get in there, you want to destroy everything, and that doesn't necessarily mean Electro Dragons either. At Town Hall 12, we see a lot of players using Lava Loon extremely effectively. I will cover that specific strategy later on, uh, I think later on this week, actually. We'll take a look at some of Raukoi's offensive just devastation uh, that he causes when he drops Lava Loon on a base. So, again, maximizing stars. This also includes trying to upgrade those troops. It's a tough call, but I think that overall, it's more important to start out when you get to a new town hall level or if you're trying to push to max out the army that you are going to be using specifically and use that as much as you possibly can. All right, moving right along to tip number three. And this may seem obvious, but even players at Lost Phoenix have been making this mistake. Never pass bases. Never ever under any circumstances, if you are pushing above 5,000, should you be passing a base. Now the exception to this rule could be, I would say, in two circumstances. And number one is maybe right after a maintenance. Because usually right after a maintenance, you will have a few seconds where players are caught off guard and you might get a bigger offer. So if you get a six trophy offer right after a maintenance, you, it might be worth passing one time in hopes of getting that 20, 30 something offer. 
Other than that, the only other reason that you would ever, ever want to pass a base might be right at the beginning of the season if you were seeing a lot of bases. If you're seeing a base every few minutes, then it might make sense to pass a really low offer because you're in the process of seeing a lot of offers coming in front of you because you have to realize, and this is where players get it wrong, if you click on next on a base, the algorithm at Supercell treats you exactly the same as if you had attacked the base. You are placed back at the end of the line to get up to the front of the line to get another base. So you're essentially giving away free trophies right there, except for those two situations that I'm talking about. And again, this is a case by case basis. If for some reason you're seeing tons of bases again and again and again, uh, my personal option is just to, uh, to attack tons of bases again and again and again and just be happy with it. Never pass a base and uh, that is something that is steadfast and I've talked to Supercell about that. They have verified that you are put at the back of the line if you pass a base. All right, time to move on to tip number four. Easy as ABC. That is right. Tip number four is a catchy if slightly cringy acronym. Always be clouding. That's right. Always be in the clouds if your personal life can withstand it. Get yourself in the clouds as often as you can. Now, this season that I've been racing Klaus, I've definitely pushed myself more than normal. I will, again, I know you guys have been asking me about this. I will, again, put out an episode where I show a bunch of photographs of strange places, routine places, and extreme places where I have been playing Clash of Clans. But again, you, you have to look at what I do for a living. I am here making videos, live streaming, many hours a day so it's super easy for me to just have the ipad sitting next to me and be in the clouds almost every waking hour as long as gala wife is okay with it that is that is the key we have to put it away we have to have that personal time the family time of course and don't get yourself in trouble but if you have a month that you can do it then you warn your friends your family well i don't know about your bosses but anyway always be clouding definitely a key to maximizing trophies Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to number five. And again, this is the this is the tough part. This is the one I feel like it's easiest to get wrong. And we're going to talk about this in depth. I'm talking about shield management. Managing the shields that you get, that you can buy, and that you get for free in Clash of Clans. Shields and guards. And using them to your advantage. Using them to minimize the number of times you get attacked. And optimize when those shields and guards expire. Now, first and most obvious is the fact that players that can spend gems on this are going to have a slight advantage. Now, that goes for saying in all cloud pushing because the ability to gem those heroes back up and gem an army to completion that may not be trained fully, even if you're using a power potion or boosting, is important because, again, you're trying to maximize the amount of time in the clouds so if you have those gems, your shield page should pretty much always look like this. Now, there are exceptions to every rule. And remember, now you've got two major shields that you can purchase. The 100 gem one day shield with a five day cooldown and the 200 gem two day shield with a 10 day cooldown. It is best to use those as many times as you can during a regular season. But now, of course, if you've got a time that you're going to be away from Clash, if you've got an event, a commitment, you're traveling, then obviously it might be worth it to save one of those shields to use it during that period of time that you can't be in the clouds and avoid the number of times you're getting attacked. But during a regular season, if you are regularly in the clouds, then you still should be using the shields as often as possible. But one key to remember is only use a shield when your village guard is expiring. Never stack two shields together. Whether it's a shield generated from a defense or it's a shield that you've purchased, you don't want to put two of them together. And here's why. Each time you attack through a shield, you lose time off of that shield. And each time you attack, the amount of time taken from your shield increases. It starts at three hours, then four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve, so on and so forth that actually increases by four hours at a time after 12 hours so 
Ideally, you want to let your shield from defending expire first. Then you go into Village Guard. Then when Village Guard is just about to go, when you're getting that red lettered message that's giving you personal break. Now also, you've got five minutes from the moment that those letters show up on your screen before you're kicked out, or that is also a time where you can buy that shield. So you wait for that message, that gives you as long as possible, and then you pop a shield, a 24 or a 48 hour, and then you go right back to attacking. You burn through that shield, hopefully, with attacks, losing those times that we talked about a few seconds ago, and then you go back into Village Guard, you go back and you buy the next shield. Now this way, you can remain shielded much more than without it. Otherwise, you're just going to burn through your regular shields all the time. Now, of course, with the cooldowns, you're going to find yourself stuck without the ability to buy these shields a lot. And that is when you're going to need to consider how long you have left on your shield and how long Village Guard is going to last. Okay, so because, and here's the other key, you've got Village Guard. You get four hours in Legend League automatically, right? You've got four hours where you can attack without being attacked. But every 23 hours you can purchase an additional two hours for only 10 gems you absolutely want to use that as often as possible as well and you don't want that to expire in the middle of the night when you're sound asleep if you're not one of those people who are willing to set an alarm wake up and buy the guard then you might want to consider how long shields are left and whether or not you want to attack and what i mean by that is well, let's take a hypothetical situation. Let's say you've got four hours left on your shield. You've attacked through it once. So your next attack is going to eradicate the rest of your shield. It'll take away all four hours and you'll be forced into village guard immediately, which is only going to last four more hours. Now, if you don't want to wake up in the middle of the night, let's just say that this is right around the time you plan on going to bed and you're lying in bed. Like, I don't know if anybody would ever do this. Okay, maybe I would once or twice. You're lying in bed with your iPad and you're sitting in the clouds. You're ready to go to sleep. It might be wiser at this point to just put the iPad away rather than trying to find that one last attack before you go to sleep. Because if you do, you will find yourself on defense in the middle of your sleep cycle. And a couple of reasons. First of all, you would much rather be able to be awake and buy that additional two hour village guard. Second of all, you want to ideally be awake and near your device whenever you take a defense. Because remember, it's possible that the attacker will not give you a shield. Below 30% damage and no town hall destroyed, you don't get a shield at all. And you're going to need to reset your defenses, traps, bombs, and also refill your clan castle. So technically, tip number six is always be around when there's a defense to be taken. And be prepared to uh, pop back in and reset everything. So there you guys go. Just a quick kind of update on where we stand in trophy racing. The tips that I use to try to maximize trophies. If you guys have tips that you would like to share down below, you might make it in a future episode. Let me know down in the comments what you have done, what you think could be done better. And we will all wait for a fix to the clouds, hopefully coming from Supercell in early 2019. As always, thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of the episode. You guys are the true hashtag Galafam. I appreciate every last one of you. Now get out there, have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will all meet back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. I beat you both handily, easily. Huh.